Good morning, everyone. TGIF, happy Friday. I hope you've had a great, great week. Um, Darren and I have had a great week. We made a really, really quick trip to Illinois to trade in our campers and um, bring the different one back. And everything went well, praise the Lord, um, for safe travels and everything just working out great. And then, of course, you know, you know, when you go away, you have just tons of catching up to do. But uh, I want to put a big thank you out to my friend Hope Stralo, who stayed with the puppies when we were gone and cleaned the house and weeded my flower bed. Oh, my goodness. She is just such a godsend. So thankful for her. A um, little overcast today. Not really sure what's going on. It's only 65 degrees. I don't know if it's the smoke not letting the sun in or if it's just overcast. But God bless our farm and God bless you guys wherever you are today. And so let's start out with, um, let's see here. I haven't uh, read um anything to you guys lately uh let me see if i want to do this right away this is pretty long this is pretty cool though how about if i if we get done in a decent time i will read this but this is pretty cool pretty cool um, and so, um, let's start out, um, with our prayers, um, prayers for Joan's Rock. I just visited with Joan and Joan from, um, when I, they were, uh, lot and Lutheran parishioners the other day. And I found out that Joan broke her wrist. Her husband tried to run her over with the lawnmower. She said, uh, she told me, she goes, grandma, you know, have you ever heard of grandma got run over by a reindeer? She said, well, Joan got run over by a lawnmower. Um, no, actually, um, the parking brake um, on the lawnmower, they were trying to fix and it rolled over her and she tried to get away and she fell and um, uh, used her hand on the cement to try to catch her fall, of course. And she broke her wrist in two places. So um, sounds like she's doing good, though. This was uh, quite a while ago. I think she's only got two weeks left, but she said that Joe is doing everything for her, and so that is awesome. Okay, um, prayers go out to Tony Burns. I just seen this on Facebook. Her and her husband are, are longtime friends of mine. Um, she has um, severe nerve damage with no femoral function. Um, been going to PT, um, been able to get rid of the wheelchair, um, and the walker and the cane. She has taught herself many tricks to be able to get things done. Um, I still need to go down the steps backwards as I can't clear the step with my foot going forwards. So, uh, sounds like, uh, she must have had some injury, um, in her femur. But she's coming along really good. But uh, please keep Tony in your prayers. Um, let's see. Prayers for um, Carolyn, our friend Carolyn. Uh, she put a post on here that um, she broke her humerus bone in her left arm on Thursday. And um, it's, uh, let's see, she's out of the hospital. Um, the bone is broke, displaced, and all they can do is put me in a sling. Um, so please keep Carolyn in your prayers. Oh my goodness, she, if anything bad can happen with her, it just is. Um, prayers for April Loomis. Um, she is, uh, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer um, in, I think, just one of her breasts, but she's having surgery next Thursday. Um, and she's a little scared, but optimistic. Um, they had found a couple masses and one of them was not cancerous, but still needs to be removed. And so she's going to be having two weeks off of work and radiation five days a week for almost two months after that. 
So please, please, please um, keep her in your prayers. Um, let's see if I have any more on here. Okay. I think that is it. Um, on my phone anyway. Um, and then prayers continue for Eunice Bjornstead from up in Wahala as she was hospitalized. Oh, you guys probably didn't know about this because I just found it out on Sunday. Um, she was hospitalized with staph infection in her leg. Uh, I went up to visit her and um, they were treating her and she was hoping to go home soon. But then she broke out with a rash from seriously the middle of her calf all the way up to her neck, both sides of her body. And so I'm going to give her a call today and uh, see how she's doing. I don't know if she's home yet or not. But please keep Eunice in your prayers. Prayers go out for um, Erin Rollness and her family um, as they lost their grandmother. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, prayers for the Dahl family as Junior um, Junior Dahl passed away. Continued prayers for Carol Gendron, um, Donna Devine. Uh, both of them, uh, Donna is in um, the nursing home in Langdon. And Carol um, is still living at home but doctoring. So please keep them in your prayers. Uh, prayers for the Kelly Gratton family as they lost their 45-year-old son. And then prayers for uh, Betty Nelson. So uh, God knows all these folks and everyone else that we do not mention that are in our minds and hearts today. So thank you, dear God, for watching over these folks. Okay, so let's uh, let us do our acts of kindness. Um, here's one. When I just moved in, I met a man with um, his German shepherd in the woods. Uh, oh, no, this is from my cousin Karina out in, uh, in Sweden, okay? And I thought this was a really neat act of kindness. When I just moved in, I met a man with his German shepherd in the woods, so me and the dogs did as usual. She always takes her dogs for a walk every day. Um, got off of the path to let him pass. And he said, thank you. And so we each went in our own direction. After weeks, I found a handwritten letter in the mailbox from him where he thanked us again. And it was both unusual and warming. And now we have become friends on Facebook and he has visited me a couple of times. Yesterday, he heard from me and said that he could drive me and the dog so that we would not have to take the trains and buses in the heat. Talk about nice. We were home and looked at, er, we went to his home and looked at his nice garden before he drove us to the workshop. And now we sit and wait in the car. Um, it is, let's see, the rest doesn't matter. But um, anyway, she is so thankful she didn't have to take her and the dogs cross country. And this man gave her um, a ride. Isn't that something? So, you know, your acts of kindness just always, always pay off. Um, okay, let me see here. I have more, but I have to go into a different area. Okay, Lori Legacy shared that, um, let's see, uh, Bruce's hospital bed came and got put together. A big Shout out and thank you to the city of Lakota, guy, Lakota guys for helping carry it in. It was 400 pounds. And she said a big thank you goes out to Lyle Stoa for putting it together with me. And to Rodney for helping me lift Bruce into the wheelchair every morning. It's been a long road for our family this year, but we are a strong lot and have great support. And thank God for all of that. Absolutely. Takes a village. It takes a village, my friends. Okay, let's see here. Um, oh, okay. Let's see. Um, huh, 
I thought I had more. I thought I had more. Let me just check here. No, no, no. Huh, okay. Well, then, um, let's just go ahead and uh, um, try to think. I swear I had more exocrinus. Um, let's just go ahead and start out with our uh, morning prayer. Um, and uh, let's, let us pray together. Good morning, Lord. Today's a new day, a chance for a new start. Yesterday is gone and with any regrets, mistakes, or failures I may have experienced. It is a good day to be glad and give thanks, and I do. Lord, thank you for today, a new opportunity to love, give, and be all that you want me to be. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, today, my friends, we are going to talk a little bit about frustration. All of us um, have experienced frustration in one form or another. So right now I can think of uh, um, a frustration with some of us up here. Um, some of us are frustrated because we haven't received any of the rains from heaven that we've been praying for. Others, like our area, have received quite a bit of rain. But I know my friends from Wahala um, haven't received any rain since they've seeded the fields. And it's getting quite bad. And we've been praying and we've been praying and we're just getting frustrated. We're wondering why why God has not sent those rains from, from heaven. Um, and that's kind of our communities. But... You know, there's other frustrations as well. We all pray and ask God for um, what, you know, we we feel we need and stuff. And we sometimes get frustrated when those prayers aren't answered. Um, but if you remember, God always answers prayers. He just answers them on his time and his way. And it might not be the way we are thinking, right? Um, and so... We live in a crazy world right now, very trying times. And I'm sure that that itself, with everything in it, leads us to feel frustrated um, more often than we like to admit. Um, now there's big frustrations and little frustrations, but sometimes, um, sometimes uh, little frustrations can uh, build up, you know, and, and stack on top of each other and then lead into feelings of anger and annoyance. Um, there have been times when the things God has allowed in our lives have left us feeling frustrated and wondering why. But we should really try to just banish the negative emotional responses to frustration and as quickly as we can um, because otherwise they can take root and, um, and then grow into bigger frustrations. And so we should really learn how to deal with them in a positive way. And as humans, that is hard. And so how do we do this? Well, this morning, um, we are going to take a look at what the Bible says about frustration. But first off, um, I, I want to start with um, just exploring some amazing people in the Bible who experience frustration as well. So first of all, your friend and mine, Jonah, okay? Jonah, the one that got swallowed up by the whale. Um, but before all that, Jonah was extremely frustrated that God asked him to go to Nineveh to preach his word because he didn't think that those people in Nineveh deserved God's gracious compassion, um, which is not his or ours, our decision to make. But anyway, so he ran away to avoid going to Nineveh. Um, and then, of course, we all kind of know the story, how it went after that. You know, Jonah sails away. A big storm comes up. Jonah gets thrown overboard and swallowed by a whale and then spit up on dry land three days later. Um, 
And so let's take a look at our lives. Have we ever kind of been following God's path as best that we can, but then we get frustrated and turn the opposite direction and run away from where he's leading us to? We're human. Um, and so we can make that choice to either act like Jonah and run away and let fear and stubbornness take over that situation with our frustration. We're tired of waiting and all that. Or we can just realize how much he loves the Lord, loves and cares for us and take our first frustrations to him constantly with faith um, that he is going to take care of that situation. That's hard. But now the truth of it is, my friends, he is never, ever far from us. He is right by our side all the time and never, ever stops trying to bring us closer to him. And he wants us to go to him with everything. And, you know, in Jonah's situation, we can uh, kind of refer to it as this. Sometimes it takes a storm to make us realize all of that. Okay. It is never God's intent to frustrate us. It's never his in intent to do that. Then we move on to your friend and mine, Abraham and Sarah. Now, if we remember the story of Abraham and Sarah, kind of the main thing we realize is they had, or that the Lord promised them babies, right? And um, they finally had their babies when Abraham was 99 and Sarah was 90. But here's how that story went. Um, God had called Abraham to be the father of all nations when he was 75 and had promised him babies. And so, of course, at that time, his wife Sarah and himself um, were extremely excited because they were not able to have children their whole life. And so years go by without any children. And God again promises Abraham a son. But see, Sarah became frustrated by what she perceives, what she perceives as an unkept promise and then talks her husband Abraham into sleeping with their servant to produce an heir. Well, that situation doesn't go well, but however, a son, Ishmael, was born when Abraham was 86, okay? Then finally, when Abraham is 99 years old and Sarah is 90, God again promises a son for both of them. They both just laughed it off as impossible. But God keeps his promises and always does. Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah when he was 99 and Sarah was 90. And then Abraham lived another 75 years. See, now Abraham showed great faith in following God's directions when God you know, asked him to move his family to Canaan. He was obedient, okay? And he asked God for clarification when he had doubts and was obedient. He stumbled a few times because he was human, and especially with the promised offspring stuff, right? It was taking too long. And then Abraham felt frustrated with God's timing, 25 years and took matters into his own hands with the servant. Now, uh, we can judge, but we better not. Because we have all tried to solve problems on our own and not have faith in God's promises. And then we take it upon ourselves to, to make the choice to, to solve our problem in following our own path instead of staying strong and confident in the path that God has chosen for us. But when we're waiting for something and we become frustrated and discouraged because we're told to wait and wait and wait, right? 
And when we take the situation in our own hands and rely on our abilities to solve the problem, things can go incredibly wrong. And more disappointment and frustration can follow. Now, when I think of this, and I've shared it with you a million times, but ever since I was a little girl, you know, I always wanted to find, you know, that man, right? Um, I prayed, but I didn't wait, you know. And, you know, so I took it in my own hands, right? I didn't let God lead me. And throughout... You know, my marriage, after, or before marriage and Darren, um, things went wrong because I was trying to fix that situation myself in the wrong ways. And then finally, Darren came along, 50 years in the waiting, okay? Um, and now when I look back, it's like, Shalise, you would have been fine just to follow his direction. And not try to take it on yourself. Now, with back to Abraham and Sarah, they dealt with the problem, okay, then of Ishmael, which, of course, no birth is a problem. But it wasn't Abraham and Sarah's, and so to them it wasn't um, their son, it was the servant's son. Until they finally sent Ishmael away from the family for good. Um, it wasn't really the outcome that they had hoped for to their promise of an heir. So that, that's a little difficult situation there. Um, so then we move to Jesus. Yes, there were a few times where maybe even Jesus was feeling frustrated. I mean, think of some of the things that happened in his life. Um, his disciples lacked faith in him. I mean, they had seen him perform miracles, um, healing people from the dead and, and every other illness, um, turning water into wine. I mean, we could go. He's got a million miracles. And he taught them every single day, but they still lacked faith and understanding. That had to be frustrating. It's kind of like my dog, Riley. Um, I got my dog from a friend. And... Good, smart dog, loving dog, um, but he knows what he does wrong, but he doesn't learn, right? Um, and, and that is just two totally different things, you know? He's eaten up my plants. He ate one of my hostas. And then Darren said he took a bite out of one of my yellow daffodils. Um, you know, I spanked him on the butt. I got after him, and he just doesn't learn but anyway um so we read in matthew 16 um you of little faith do not do you not understand how is it you do not understand um and that just reminds me of just like duh what part of that don't you get but it must have been frustrating you know for jesus to share spiritual truths and realize that they weren't learning his lessons even after all they had experienced with him. But, however, Jesus never lost his spirit of love for his disciples. Never. And he never does for us. You know, and so then I think about us. I wonder how many times we have been frustrated with him um, with our excuses and lack of faith. It is at that time when we start feeling that frustration... We should pause and remember with thankfulness his great grace and mercies that are new every morning. So just pause and wait, my friends. You know, think about this. Might he be telling us that when others frustrate us, a little grace and mercy may be in order? Try it. Do you like it? Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about frustration with God then. And as I said, I'm pretty sure that at one time or another, all of us have kind of felt that. Um, you know, when our prayers go, quote unquote, unanswered or not the way we expected or not in the right time. I mean, they're always answered, but we think they're not. 
Um, but just know that you are not alone. It's a emotional human response um, that we unfortunately sometimes direct to God. Um, we hear in the Bible, David crying out many times in his Psalms. Um, how long, O oh Lord? How long? Or when? Or why? Okay. He understood that God is the perfect judge who could deliver him from all of his enemies, illnesses, isolations, etc. He did understand that. But that didn't stop him from voicing his impatience, complaining, and anguish. And we might think that that is kind of bad, but there's a great lesson in this. You see, David took out his frustration straight to God, not at God, to God. And then he wrestled with him over his situations. <coughs> um, and so, like I said, we may wonder, is it wrong to question God? Well, here's the deal, my friends. We're human. And whether we bring it to him or not, he still knows our hearts and minds. He knows when we feel frustrated, whether we bring it to him or not. And he understands all of our emotions. And so when we approach him with, um, in the way to seek understanding of why and to get clarity and comfort as to why we feel He's not answering our prayers or didn't answer them the right way or in the right time. When we do that, he respects that and he will bring peace to us. So that's why I say when you get frustrated with something, don't um, put it out on other people. Don't hold in that emotion. Give it to God. Talk to him. Um, but however, if we question if if we don't take our frustration to him for that understanding clarity and comfort and we question him because we think he made a mistake or he isn't keeping his promises then my friends we do not truly know god okay go to him with a heart that earnestly seeks to understand okay because there may be, and there will be times when he will just simply tell you, just trust me. And that's when our faith kicks in, okay? Now, while in the midst of our frustrations, we take a deep breath and rest in his never-ending great love and care for us. Now, this point in my life, I'm going to refer back to Darren again. Um, of course, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, are my, my peace, my forever, everlasting peace. But with Darren here on earth, um, it is just, he takes care of me. And, and it's, it's just a peace that I've never, ever had in my life on an earthly measure. And then of course, when I got into my ministry, I have this amazing piece that I never had before, even though I called myself a Christian. Um, but being in the word of the Lord every day helps to bring me a peace that surpasses all understanding. And it is so awesome. Matter of fact, I have to share something with you quick, an act of kindness that I did. And I'm, I'm not bragging about this. I'm just, you know how sometimes your house, your heart can be warm. Mine was on fire. And so I was coming back, going through Grand Forks and I stopped at McDonald's, um, just to get some fries. I just wanted some McDonald's fries. And so I seen a native American walking through the parking lot. He stopped at the, uh, convenience store, but they were closed because that's where I had gotten gas. And then he went over to McDonald's. Well, you know how short of help we are with everything. So he went up to the um, counter 
and wanted to order food. And the lady kind of rudely told him, you know, that he's got to order on the kiosk. And he didn't understand. He goes, I don't have your app, you know, and I don't have a phone and this and that and the other thing. And she said, well, we don't have enough help to, um, you know, have people at the counter. So you're going to have to order from there. And I was right there. And so I went up to him, put my hand on his shoulder. And I'm like, come on over here. Let's do this together. And I said, with that, I'll buy you your supper. So we went on the kiosk and we ordered and I just included my fries in there and whatever. And he was just like, wowed. But that led us into a talk about Jesus Christ. And, you know, I always like to share with everybody that I'm a sinner like everybody else and I need Jesus just as much as everybody else. But I also like to share of my past. And so I told him, I said, you know, everybody's got ghosts in their past. And I said, I have a dark past. And then I told him about getting into my ministry and finding that each and every day is a new and fresh start. And I'm into the word somehow, some way, every day. And I shared it with him and I just got this big smile on my face. I put my arm around him and I said, my friend, I said, you just cannot imagine the peace I have been given as a free gift and get to live with each and day through the great grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, you know, I'm not going to go on a street corner and yell it, but I'm going to share it with as many people as I can. I said, you, you don't have to be like that. Just, you know, pray, talk to God, yada, yada. Anyway, so anyway, he, he said, you know, I used to be really, you know, big in my spirituality. Um, but then some bad stuff happened in my life and I've really drawn away and I really need to get him back in my life. Then he proceeded in telling me about um, the Native American culture, which I thought was cool and I, I always do, but um, they don't call God God. They call him their creator and so they pray to their creator. I said, you know what? We all have one higher power and what you call him does not matter. You call him the creator, you call him God, you know, what, whatever. <clears throat> and so he proceeded to tell me a little bit more on that. And I prayed with him. And I left and my heart was on fire. So on fire. The power of the Holy Spirit was just so working at a human level. You know what I mean? Um, it was just so awesome. And I just, when I drove out and I watched him walking across the parking lot. I just prayed that somehow, some way, that visit with me and the Holy Spirit would change his life. Just a tad bit. Anyway, okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm almost aware am I? Okay. Um, in Jeremiah 31.3, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. So never be afraid to go to Jesus when we need help. Go to him in confidence and hope. And then in Hebrews 4.16, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Always, always. Okay, so overcoming the spirit of frustration frustration is as old of a reaction as the beginning of time okay in romans eight twenty, it says for the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice but by the will of the one who subjected it now when sin entered his creation god cursed the physical world that apple okay we see the frustrated man, uh, frustration manifested in thorns and thistles, sin and death, okay? Sickness, decay, and suffering is not what the world was supposed to look like. And we live in a fallen and frustrating world, that darn apple. 
But here, we are to live and wait in hope, not in frustration. Eventually, our frustration will end and we can look forward to that eternal life with Christ that he has promised us. How beautiful is that? So in the meantime, tuck these words into your heart to fight against the spirit of frustration. Here's a couple verses. Ecclesiastics 3 verse 1. You guys are familiar with this one. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Know that. Know that. Okay. Take each day as it comes, trusting God's plan for your life, my life, everyone's life. His timeline and his will 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 be done and it might not be our will okay um james 1 verse 4 let perseverance finish its work so that you may be so that you may so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything if we try to handle it on our own we're going to screw up everything okay so let it take let it take its course um Persevering through trials brings us maturity of our faith, wisdom, courage, and the strength and grace we need in our lives. Okay, so don't try to take a shortcut. Romans 12.12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. That, it says it all. That one should go on the refrigerator, you guys. Romans 12.12, 12. look forward to all that God has planned for us. When trials come, remember God is in complete control. Hang on to that lifeline of prayer. It's unended. It's a free gift. Okay, we don't only get three lifelines. We have a lifeline of prayer. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Seriously, you guys, the Bible tells us that. Oh, take a deep breath. If the Bible tells us that we need only be still, why would we get in a ruckus and be stressed out and frustrated over stuff? Relax. It's going to be taken care of. I have gotten so much better on this than before I got into my ministry. It's cool, you guys. Listen to the words of Exodus 14, 14. God will fight our battles, okay? We are to stop trying to do it ourselves. Rest and be still. And then always pray against the spirit of frustration. Frustrations can appear when we aren't getting what we desire or need, and sometimes they surface with unmet expectations. Sometimes lack of sleep, Chronic physical pain, all that takes over and it makes even the smallest things bring about reactions we regret instead of being still, bringing it to the Lord and being still. Old hurts can lurk under the surface and on days that they bubble up, frustrations abound. But what can we do about the past? What can we do about the past? Bring those feelings to God. When frustration creeps into our lives, recognize it for what it is and go straight to Jesus. Talk to him about it. He wants you to vent to him. Tell him why or who has uh, caused you to be frustrated because he will respond in love because that is his nature. Talk to him like a friend. Talk to him like a friend here on earth. Ask him to heal the situation, to reconcile the situation, and to show what he wants you to learn. Maybe some of these frustrational experiences are a situation that he wants you to learn something by. And then also pray for increased peace and patience. His Holy Spirit is guiding us into understanding our frustrations, and will guide us on how to deal with them. It's a process, though, my friends. It's a process of transformation. But with his help, we can work through frustration 
and experience more peace than we can ever imagine. Peace that passes all, peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. I sure hope this helps you guys. Um, I love it. This might be one coffee with Christ you want to save and watch every day, right? <laughs> um, we don't have time for this today. We'll try on Monday if my message is a little bit shorter. So with that, let us uh, all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you with his favor and this whole entire world and give us all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made, my friends. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Okay, until Monday, um, God bless you and bye for now. Have a great weekend.